This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Tuesday's primary election results could be a concern for the presidential candidates. President Biden and Donald Trump won in landslides, but more than 47,000 Democrats voted uninstructed, and 120,000 Republicans voted for someone other than Trump. Wisconsin will be a decisive state in November. Biden carried the state by less than 1% in 2020. Donald Trump is calling migrants animals and other disparaging names again, most recently on the campaign trail in Green Bay Tuesday. Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. Trump also calls the influx of migrants at the border a bloodbath. The Biden campaign says Trump is embracing political violence. Recent furloughs in the Marshfield Clinic health system will be permanent. Marshfield Clinic is telling employees that those who are furloughed in January will no longer be employed by May 4th. The furloughs account for 3% of Marshfield Clinic's workforce. It's been one year on the job for Wisconsin's Secretary of State. Sarah Godlewski says her office authenticates 15,000 documents each year for all kinds of Wisconsinites. You know, a family that finally heard that they can adopt a child in Thailand or a business. I, my first one was a cheese shop that finally got to sell their cheese overseas. But Godlewski tells Up North News the office has had to do more with less since it was defunded and downsized nine years ago. The legislature has been so extreme that they've basically defunded this constitutional office at the detriment of Wisconsin. The office authenticates 15,000 documents a year for things like international business and adoptions. Nearly 3,000 students in Wisconsin will get advanced manufacturing training for high-demand jobs with grants from the Wisconsin Fast Forward program. 17 school districts will train students for careers like robotics, 3D printing, and drones. The half million dollars in state grants will reimburse schools for costs. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. This is news from WMDX Madison. Some local teenagers are heroes after saving other children during the big snowstorm Tuesday afternoon. Their school bus slid off the road and rolled over on County Highway V near Sauk City. One student tells Channel 15 they were able to pry the emergency door open and help the other kids out. Wayne County Executive Joe Parisi will leave office on Friday, May 3rd. Parisi's led the county since 2011. He announced last fall he plans to retire. Before he was county executive, Parisi represented the 48th district in the Wisconsin Assembly for six years. Before that, he was Dane County Clerk. Voters will choose Parisi's successor later this year. Melissa Agard, Dana Pelabon, Regina Vividor, and Wes Sparkman are all running. The assistant Republican majority leader of the Wisconsin Assembly is retiring. Republican Don Plummer from Lodi was first elected in a special election in 2018 and was elected assistant majority leader later that year. Plummer served on several committees, including mental health and substance abuse prevention, tourism, and the Speaker's Task Force on Human Trafficking. The 42nd District covers an area north of Madison. A construction worker burned in an explosion at Camp Randall Stadium two years ago is settling his lawsuit for $22 million. The State Journal reports the settlement avoids a trial that was set to start this month. Jeremy Rose was burned over 70% of his body after a foreman used a torch to dry a floor while Rose and another worker were putting flammable material on that floor. Rose has had to have several operations and extensive medical care. The water in the town of Westport is not safe to drink. A boil water advisory has been in effect since Tuesday. Officials say the water system in the Bishop's Bay area had a pressure drop after a contractor closed a valve by accident. The valve is fixed and the pressure is back, but Westport authorities say people in the meantime should not use their water for cooking, drinking, or washing dishes. It could be contaminated and make people sick. And the popular Dane County Farmer's Market returns to the Capitol Square on Saturday the 13th. The Saturday market moves to Bree Stevens Field on July 13th for Art Fair on the Square. And that's what you need to know. This is WMDX News. 
The Bucks lose at home. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Bucks lost to the Memphis Grizzlies last night, 111 to 101. The Bucks now 29 and 9 at Pfizer Forum this year. Doc Rivers says he became increasingly concerned about Giannis Antetokounmpo's sore hamstring injury as the game wore on. Uh, everyone said he's good. Uh, and Giannis said he was good after the game, so uh, it was just visible what you saw. And so, you know, I'm protective in that way for right now. Listen, we have. What, eight games, seven games, we, we want to be right and healthy, and that's more important than, than winning and losing right now. Baseball, the Brewers have today off after losing to the Twins yesterday, 7-3. to three. It was the first game in nearly three years for starting pitcher Joe Ross. Following two Tommy John surgeries, Pat Murphy. Joe will tell you he didn't throw his best, but he competed, and I love what I saw because, I mean go out there and he hadn't started a baseball game in major league since 2021 and has had you know a track record of of tough injuries to get back on the hill and compete against a good ball club you know a lot of today is the minnesota twins they hit in the clutch and they they took seven walks which is unacceptable on our part um and you know they hit when they needed to that's brewers manager pat murphy with sports i'm mike clemens on your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Not that it's any big surprise, but Joker 2, Foley Adieu, has received an R rating due to strong language, violence, sexuality, and brief full nudity. The Motion Picture Association deems full nudity, albeit brief, much more offensive than malingering partial nudity. However, it does make it easier for kids under 17 that sneak into the film to be alert so they don't miss it. The film stars Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. The first Joker grossed one billion worldwide. Joker 2 is set for release October 4th. Speaking of brief full nudity, Steve-O refused to appear on Bill Maher's podcast Club Random because Maher said he wouldn't not smoke pot. Double negatives aside, the star of Jackass, whose real name is Stephen Gilchrist Glover, has been sober going on 16 years and was ready to say yes until Maher said him not smoking on the podcast was a deal breaker. If you're looking for something old that's new to watch, here's one of Pete's retro picks. Check out The Larry Sanders Show from the early 90s. The late Gary Shandling plays the title character, who hosts a Tonight Show-esque late-night talk show. It's a realistic and hilariously funny look behind the scenes that captures the chaos of a nightly talker. The show also stars Rip Torn and Jeffrey Tambor, and you can find it on HBO. During Disney's annual shareholder meeting, CEO Bob Iger shot down the idea that NBC Universal's Epic Universe will steal visitors from Disney's turf in Orlando, Florida. Iger also said Disney is entertaining the idea of a new avatar area of Disneyland. I know what you're thinking, and yes, you might have to wait in line for well over an hour to see the Avatar attraction, but that is still a fraction of the time we spent sitting in theaters watching the actual movie. Forbes has released its 2024 billionaires list, and Taylor Swift is on it for the first time. Forbes credits her song catalog, tours, and real estate portfolio for the income boost. The New York Post reports that the 34-year-old Swift is now one of about 2,700 people who are worth over $14 trillion collectively. Another newcomer to this year's list of billionaires is Magic Johnson, who made his money investing in professional sports, Starbucks, and real estate. You know who didn't make the list? Me and Jennifer Lopez, who, due to low ticket sales, has rebranded her current tour. It started out as the This Is Me Now tour, but has been changed to the This Is Me Live Greatest Hits tour. Yahoo News reports this is a reflection of weak sales from Lopez's new album. When experiencing low ticket sales, always make it a Greatest Hits tour, or even better, just sing Taylor Swift songs. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. A few lingering light showers likely today. The wind will gradually die down. Our high right around 40 this afternoon. The wind north at 15 to 25 this morning. Only 5 to 15 here by late afternoon. Tonight, partly cloudy, 27. Tomorrow, 43. Saturday, sunshine with a high of 48. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 33. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.